Now here we have a basic spreadsheet just to show off the basic principles of how time works in Google Sheets. So first off we have the weekday uh, and then the start and end times and how many hours worked. Now it's important when you're adding in start and end time that you put it in the correct format. If we started at 7 a.m. and we ended at 3 p.m., this doesn't work very well for calculating hours worked because if we just if if we calculate three at takeaway seven, we get negative four, which isn't a time. So instead we need to input our times as a time. Now the easiest way to do that is just putting in seven and then a colon and then zero zero, and that gives us 7 a.m. You can see up here in the formula bar, it actually automatically changes to seven zero 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 zero, which means 7 a.m. For the end time, we could use 24 hour time, which would be 1500, or we could just type in 3 p.m and that automatically changes it to 1500. For the hours worked, it's just the end time minus the start time. D3 take away C3, press enter and we get eight hours. Now, if you're not used to 24 hour time, we can highlight these, click on format and go down to number and then you've got these uh, date and times or you've got a custom date time and then select what we want from the list. I'm going to choose 1.25 p.m. and then click on apply and we can see straight away we get 7 a.m., 3 p.m. but this hours work shouldn't be 8 a.m. instead it should be a duration of 8 hours. So we go up to format, number and then down here we've got a duration option. So we click on that and we can see 8 hours exactly. Now let's add in a few more times and see where there might be some hiccups in calculating time. So just for clarity, let's just change these to AM PM time. So I'm just going to copy, that's control C, and then select all of these and then control Alt V to paste in the format. Now, if we go over to the hours worked, we can copy that down and we get seven hours for Tuesday, which is perfectly fine. But if we copy that down further, we actually end up with negative numbers and we can see why within the start and end times. The start time here is 12 PM and we end at 12 AM. So it's actually thinking it's going backwards in time. If we take away 8 p.m. from 4 a.m., we somehow end up with negative 16 hours. So a quick fix if we go over that midnight barrier is just to add one to the end of the times. Now the problem with this is we'd have to go through and manually figure out which ones we're going over that tw uh, midnight barrier. So instead, let's delete all of this. So instead, we are going to do one formula that will calculate all of the times whether or not you're going over that midnight barrier. So we'll start with exactly what we had before. We have D3 take away C3. And now we're going to add a logical parameter. Now this logical parameter is uh, going to be asking, is this time greater than this time? So all we need to do is select C3, put in the greater than symbol, and then D3. We close the bracket and we can see 8 a.m. is exactly what we had before. The reason for this is because the part of the logical parameter is saying this is false. Now false in Google Sheets is equivalent to zero. So it's saying we're adding zero onto the end because our start time is not after our end time. So we just take that and we can copy that all the way down and we can see all of our times are perfectly set. Down here we have eight hours for both of these times, even though they cross that midnight barrier and we get 12 hours for Wednesday. Now, if we wanted to calculate the total number of hours, we can just do equal sum and then select the numbers above 43 hours. So that's how we calculate times in Google Sheets. But what happens if we want to calculate more times for more people? Well, we'll do that in a moment. But before we do, if this information has been helpful to you, please leave a like and maybe leave a comment down below. It really helps out the channel. So we have here a second sheet. And in the second sheet, we see that we have two lots of people. Up the top, we have the manager and the manager is salaried. So that's why they have set times here. But down the bottom, we have times that look a little bit more exact because those were the times that the workers clocked in and out. Now we're gonna start off with the manager at the top. We'll calculate each of their individual times of when they worked and then we'll come and then we'll apply that to all of our workers down below. So for the first day, Monday, we can just do equals this time, take away this time. But remember, we're going to have to add on that logical statement that we had earlier because later on, on Friday here, this manager goes over that midnight cutoff. So let's add to this our logical parameter. This time is greater than this time. And again, just reading that, if this is true, then it's going to add one to our total time or our total duration, one being 24 hours. 
If it's false, then it adds on zero. So we press enter on that and we get 10 hours because there's 10 hours between 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. Let's go ahead and copy this over to Tuesday and we get zero because there's nothing written here on Tuesday. However, your roster might have something written in here, for example, hyphens to say, hey, this person isn't on today, or maybe a day off saying again, maybe this person's not on. I'm going to stick with hyphens, but we end up with this value error. Now, the reason we have this value error is because it's trying to do math on things that aren't numbers. Hyphens are not numbers, and it's struggling with minus and logical operators. So all we need to do is enter the cell, and then at the beginning, we can write if error press enter and we get nothing in return, which is what we want. Nothing is very similar to zero. It's not exactly the same as zero, but it's very similar. If you did want a zero, we can enter the formula again and at the end put a comma and then a zero. And that will visually show us that this manager did no work on uh, Tuesday. Let's copy this across to each of the days. And now we can see that each of the hours have been applied, including crossing that midnight barrier because 10 p.m. to 6 a.m is eight hours. Now we want to calculate the hours worked. So all we'll do is sum all of these together and we get 41 hours and 45 minutes. Now that's fine. However, down here, you can see that we don't have extra room in between each person to calculate these individual times. So what we'll do is extract the formulas from each of these times that we've already calculated. We'll smush them all together into a single cell and then add them all up. And hopefully at the end, we'll get 41 hours and 45 minutes. So let's first turn each of these times into the formula that they're represented by. So we start off with equals formula text, and then we select the cell that we want. In this case, the cell is C8. I'm actually going to copy uh, E8 back into C8. So we get that if error. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this across to each of our days. Now that's great, it looks very messy. So now we're going to take all of these formulas and combine them all into one cell. Now this part is going to be a little bit advanced, but I'll step you through it bit by bit. So we start off with a text join. Our delimiter will be a comma because we're going to be summing a whole bunch of formulas together with a comma in between each one. Then ignore empty, we'll go with true. We, we don't want to take into account the empty text. And then the text that we'll choose are these formula texts that we came up with earlier. Press enter and we get this string of formulas. We've got the if error from C6 and B6 and then E6 and D6 and so on. And all of this is in one cell. But we have a problem with these equal symbols. We don't want equal symbols within our final sum formula. So now we're going to enter the cell and get rid of the equal symbols using the split function. The text will be exactly what we just came up with. That's our text. At the end, we'll put a comma and then an equals because we don't want the equal symbols. If we press enter on this, we can now see that if errors are in their own cells. Now the next part might seem a little counterintuitive because we're again going to use text join. Our delimiter, we're not going to have one. We're going to leave it blank this time because we put in that comma earlier. Ignore empty. I'm going to say true. We don't want the empties. In this case, there won't be any empties. And then the text will be exactly what we've already come up with. So press enter. And now all of the if errors all in one cell with commas in between, but without any equal symbols. The next step is to turn this formula, which we can see in the formula bar into a string. So if you keep an eye on the formula bar, as I press control C and then control shift V, that formula just turned into the text. The last thing to do is press enter, go right to the beginning and we'll, we'll write equals sum and then open a bracket, press enter and we get 1.739. If we turn that into a duration format number duration, we get 41 hours and 45 minutes. We can now put that where the hours worked were and delete everything else. So now the total time is calculated for us and we can copy this down to each of our workers down below. We can see most of them have crossed 40 hours, except for Hank at the bottom, 36 hours, and we are going to calculate overtime. Now in our case, overtime is going to be calculated at anything over 40 hours a week. So up the top, let's write in 40 hours and we'll use this cell in a moment. So down here, we'll write equals, this cell here is greater than 40 hours. Press enter and if it's true, it'll give us a tick. If not, it'll be blank. 
Press enter on that and we want to keep R1 static. We don't want it to move as we copy this formula down to all of our workers. So press F4 on R1, press enter, and we can copy this down to each of our workers and you can see those that went over 40 hours are now ticked. To calculate how much over time, we can say equals, if this equals true, then this time the hours worked minus R1 and let's press F4 on that last um, on that last cell. Press enter and we get the amount of time owed as overtime. We'll press Control C to copy and then Control V down the bottom. If we don't want this false down the bottom, then we can head back up to the formula bar and then after R1, type a comma. Press enter and then copy. Whoops, and then copy that down. And that's how we can calculate the amount of hours for our workers. Now it is important that you do calculate this yourself. Sure your employer will be calculating this, but it's important that you do it yourself because the number one crime in America is wage theft. They might be skimming some minutes here and there, but over time that adds up, especially if you've got a policy in place that says if you're late by one minute, they'll dock you 15 minutes. Look up some help online because it's out there and people have plenty of stories of how they can get that money back. Again, I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please leave a like, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next video.